the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. We come to Bright Saturday today, and all through this week, if you've been following the lectionary, you would have heard various resurrection-themed readings. Not always about the resurrection itself, but resurrection-themed. And so we come to today. In the reading from Acts, and we read through Acts in this particular part of the liturgical year. In the reading from Acts, we had the disciples performing miracles, things that were possible after the resurrection, after they had received the Holy Spirit. And in the Gospel reading, we would expect to find something very, very late. We would expect to find something about the resurrection. He is not here, he is risen, and, 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 um, and readings along these lines. And yet we don't find that. We find, we find something quite early in Christ's ministry. Along the River Jordan, there were a number of people who were using water for religious reasons. Many would use it for some kind of ablution, some kind of ritual cleansing, done each time a transgression was, um, each, each time a transgression was done, a person would cleanse themselves. A person may also cleanse themselves for everything that they didn't know. Very, very similar to confession in this, in this sense. What John was doing was different and unique. And this is why he was given the term John the Baptizer. Because everyone else was splashing themselves. Everyone else may have been, may even have been immersing themselves. But this was all directed at the self. This is my transgression and therefore my restitution. John was unique in saying that this was insufficient. John was unique in this. That is until his cousin began to baptize. Until Jesus began to baptize. And John's disciples, well, in, in our own terminology, we may think of this as, as intellectual property. This is what we're doing. Why are you doing this? Go find your own thing. John doesn't have this reaction at all. He's holding true to why it is that he was baptizing in the first place. Because the people needed this and couldn't provide this themselves. Just like we don't have self-baptisms now. It was insufficient at that time for repentance, just as it's insufficient now. And so his followers were saying, well, you know, he's baptizing. He was with you three seconds ago. What's going on? And John's reaction is everything that we would expect of a man of God and everything that we would not expect in most people. He says it's good. It's right that this should happen. In fact, people should be following him. Should be following him. He has the words of life. He has everything needful. He needs to increase while I decrease. He must wax while I wane. His star must grow and be seen by all. Where my time has come. This gives us a model. It gives us a model on how we should relate to, um, to the words of Christ, to the works of Christ. It's very easy, and you may have seen it, where the words of Christ are put forward and then they are used not for the purposes of glorification, but for the purposes of oneself. And nothing about that is right. Instead, those who point towards Christ, which is not only clergy, but each one of us, those who point towards Christ must be careful to let him shine must be careful not to, not to think, 
He can't do it without us. But instead to do our best to make sure that we're out of the way. That He can work. If we are, if we are particularly blessed, it may be that He works through us. But not to have so much pride that He can't do it without us. That our role is... Um, is vital and without us nothing can happen he must increase while I must decrease he must increase while all of us must decrease while all of us point to him in a world so desperately needing that realignment that is repentance <laughs> let him increase let all that we do be about his increase not our own but about his increase. And in doing this, we too may call ourselves followers of Christ. Amen.